my pleasure to introduce Mr. Arvind Ratnam, Chief Strategy Officer for Q Control, speaking about net quantum navigation, next generation capabilities for aerospace and defense platforms. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's truly uh, great to be here. Um, I've been with Q-Control for about four years. I'm the, I'm the chief strategy officer. And you know what an amazing time uh, to be in quantum. Uh, commercial quantum advantage is here. Um, and you know, uh, Q-Control does two things. One is in, in, in compute and sensing. Uh, one is in compute, one is in sensing. They're two slightly different, but ultimately related things. Uh, one of the things that has happened in sensing, which I'm here to talk about, is that true quantum advantage is here. And specifically, I want to tell you about how uh, quantum assured navigation is, is changing the world. Um, despite all the excitement in AI, people have, you know, people are still trying to figure out where AI will truly land. And one place where we see AI as making a true impact is actually helping quantum systems be better. Uh, the, the, the work that we Q Control has done uh, has been to harness the, the power of AI to solve what is probably the hardest uh, uh, problem or subclass of problems across all areas of quantum technology, and that is, that is really about noise. So, so Q Control uh, set out maybe eight years ago to, to solve this particular problem of noise, and it has solved it in two different, slightly different ways. In quantum computing, what we did was implement infrastructure software that improves the outcomes uh, that come out of quantum computers. And these are used by some of the most prominent hardware vendors. It's almost by exception that, that people are not uh, either using Q Control or evaluating Q Control now in the area of quantum computing. But in, 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 in quantum sensing, that, that same noise problem translates into uh, what can potentially be exquisitely sensitive uh, quantum sensors, but the problem is, 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 is platform noise, and I'll tell you about it. Uh, we work with defense agencies uh, and, and, and primes to deliver mission-critical uh, uh, capability, and you, know, you, you see some of the logos of the people that, that we have worked with uh, recently. Uh, and you know, um, it's it, it's really an exciting time to be in this uh, in this in this field. Um, we did a set of very very interesting trials. We've accumulated several dozens of flight hours, and in the in the next 12 months looks so exciting. We are going to be on multiple platforms, uh, demonstrating uh, our capability. Uh, why am I talking about all this? Why is quantum sensing even relevant? When people talk about quantum, I mean, if you're otherwise relatively less informed about what is happening in the, in the quantum sector, uh, a lot of the conversation is about quantum computing, which is understandable. But there is, this, the, there is quantum sensing. What's interesting about quantum sensing is it is today's market. It's really about, about capability that is required today. We are so reliant as a society on, on GPS. Um, if GPS is knocked out, the effect on society is, uh, is immense. Uh, uh, you know, there was one estimate uh, uh, that, that uh, the effect of lost GPS is, is over a billion dollars per day just in the US. Uh, GPS denial has become a big problem. Uh, it's almost, uh, you know, uh, in the words of Mike Biersuk, uh, who was uh, ex, ex DARPA, uh, who helped fund some of the, the initial efforts around, uh, around this, uh, it's really become an electromagnetic iron curtain. Uh, you know, if, there's, there's websites like gpsjam.org that, that, that show you almost in a live sense what is, what is happening out there. And the, the, the spots of red that you see um, out there on the, on the map are places where really GPS, there is no GPS signal or GPS signal is, is significantly compromised. Uh, uh, fundamentally, uh, GPS is a, is a weak RF signal that can be easily overwhelmed. Uh, and uh, you know you you can buy jammers for a few hundred bucks that can that can jam signals up to a few hundred meters and it's easy to get uh, more sophisticated and then go out to a few kilometers and unfortunately the the, the flying altitude of airplanes is, is a few hundred kilo, is, is a few few kilometers and and the effect is 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 you can you you can overwhelm this the, the signal and, and you know you the the the, the blips uh, the darts in in yellow are the are, are flights and so essentially um, we are having to fly around uh, the, uh, these, these parts of, of denial. And as you know, that is this massively 
uh, 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 non-optimized. Uh, so recently, this was in the news. Uh, the European Commission, um, uh, the, the European Commissioner uh, Ursula von der, Le von der Leyen's, I want to get her name properly. Uh, you know, she was up in the air for an hour. She was, uh, and you know, the, the plane lost GPS, and we we know it was it was suspected Russian uh, uh, interference. And usually, it's uh, it's state actors who do this. And uh, she, you know, the plane had to land with paper maps. Right, and so this is really today's problem. And as GPS technology gets older and older, and there's there's technologies like MCode that are that are making GPS a little bit more resilient, but it's it still fundamentally doesn't solve the problem. So there is there's a massive interest in alternative PNT technologies to to, to complement GPS, not replace it, but complement GPS, and 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 make uh, navigation more more safer. We um, uh, and you know those those techniques range from you know Doppler type techniques to to visual techniques to uh, to, to radio based techniques, but fundamentally all of these are, are are complementary. So let me take you back to orienteering, whether you were in the scouts or you know when you think of the uh, of of magnetism and the Earth's magnetic field, we think of uh, north south. But in reality, the Earth's magnetic field has all these bumps and squiggles and and, and lines. If you can work out exactly where you are uh, on the Earth's magnetic map, the implication is you can navigate without GPS, and that is huge. So, so what quantum sensors do is, uh, is, is let us see these, these unseen geophysical features in any conditions. If you want to get slightly technical, there is a, there's a magnetic field that comes from the core of the Earth. That's the north-south signal, generally speaking, that little compasses can pick out, and then there is the crust of the Earth, uh, you know, which has mineral deposits and such that, that cause these squeals and bumps, largely speaking. I know I'm being non, not very technically accurate. Uh, and it's really that, that, those, that crustal magnetic field that, uh, that we sense. Uh, and you know, if you can construct uh, these, these quantum sensors, and there are several techniques to, to do this well, uh, you, you can, you know, the, the, the real advantage that quantum sensors bring that the traditional sensors don't is they're incredibly sensitive, right? And they're sensitive enough to be able to, to detect these changes in the Earth's crustal magnetic field. Uh, and, you know, I, I state some sensitivity numbers. I don't, I don't want to get into it, but, but really they, they can be made very small and very sensitive and be able to, to detect these changes. But the problem is noise. If you typically put these, uh, these sensors, even if you make them really well on a plane, most of the field that you detect is the noise from the plane itself. So the, 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 the problem to solve is, is how do you cancel the signature of the plane and, and, uh, and, and pull out the signal from the Earth? If you can do that successfully, then you can navigate with our GPS. And this is the, this is the essential innovation that we have brought uh, to, the, to the industry. And we do that uh, using a combination of artificial intelligence and physics. Um, and so, so our uh, specific denoising algorithm, together with the rest of the stack, which is, which is uh, you know, uh, map matching and 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 all of the all of the other uh, pieces of the control stack, is, is is fast learning, right? We can go from a cold start, uh, you know, go on any any platform, a, a helicopter, a, a plane, pretty much anything that flies, and even larger larger drones. Um, and, and, and essentially fly with a tiny bit of learning that just happens on the plane without any retuning for different flight maneuvers, for you know, equipment changes on the plane, et cetera, and it's, it's, it's best in class. So yeah, I mean, just to summarize, it's a combination of, of magnetic maps that exist largely in the public domain today, but there's also proprietary maps together with the, the, the sensing package that, that we built, and most importantly, the, the, the software that we have developed on top. When you combine all these three things, you have a complete quantum navigation system. And that the navigation system can be rack mounted, it can go in various form factors and, and on, on, a, on, a, on a number of vehicle uh, platforms. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I was mentioning, we have accumulated dozens of, uh, flight of hours of flight time. Uh, we have tested up to 19,000 feet. We are soon gonna go to cruising altitude. Of, uh, of regular commercial airliners. Uh, Airbus is one of our investors, and so we are working really closely with them. Uh, so, is, so is Lockheed Martin, and there's tons of news about us. You guys can, can go, go read. And yeah, I mean, these are maneuvers that, uh, and we have executed maneuvers that are beyond the, beyond the comfort level of, of regular passengers, and you know, we have tested in a variety of, of, of configurations. 
Uh, yeah, so you know the, the results uh, have been impressive. Uh, essentially, we have outperformed uh, the, the best-in-class alternative navigation technologies by over uh, over 100x. So this is you know sort of equivalent to as we have published elsewhere. This is equivalent to a sharpshooter, you know, who's who's looking at a site and he's able to hit a bullseye at a thousand yards. Um, and so, so typically, even if GPS is denied, we can. Um, uh, the, our results, our initial results, show that our RMS error is about 100 meters less. You know, in the best cases, up to up to 10 meters or so. So essentially, you can we can position ourselves in any spot on the Earth within within a within a few meters or or a few tens of tens of meters, and that is good enough for commercial flights as well as for for defense missions. It's really a, a game changer. Um, and uh, yeah, so so this is another sort of sort of way to way to look at it. Today's traditional systems, today's traditional alternative PNT systems use inertial navigation. However, because of certain classical uh, effects, they, they drift over time, and the, the, uh, the amount of drift continues to increase over time. So after, after maybe, uh, as you look at the, the plot, um, you know, after about an hour of flying, you are, you're way off, right? You're, you're, you're kilometers off from where you think you're, uh, you're supposed to be or where the, where the ground truth is. And we solve that problem by bounding the, the amount of error that, that comes out of the, of the system. And yeah, so, so we are already shipping. Uh, our first set of uh, prototype units are, are available. We call the product as Ironstone Opal. And it, con it consists of, of really um, your, your traditional Computer, which you know, uh, um, which is standard to any given airplane, and a, and a controller and a, and a little magnetometer, and we work in concert with uh, the inertial navigation system that's already out there, which is usually, uh, 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 you know, a combination of scalar and vector instruments, and uh, and yeah, so we are talking to several commercial airliners uh, as I as I speak, uh, and that's great, but I want to talk about one more thing. And that is, uh, you know, we are we are already integrating our, our we are already in talks with integrating with our core technology, with uh, with defense partners for sea-based applications. So uh, 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 it turns out that magnetic navigation works really well in the air, uh, but for for the, for the water, something different is needed, and 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 that is gravitational navigation. And again, the the, the principle is is the same, uh, and platform noise destroys the signal. Right? So noise comes from a variety of factors. It comes from fields uh, that are within close proximity of the sensor itself. It comes from gradients that might exist. It also comes from vibration, right? And so the, the true noise is hidden in there somewhere on the, on the top right. As you see in quantum computers, it's the same thing. The, the true signal is there somewhere, but you've got to cut the noise down in order to have viable quantum computers. The same thing in, uh, in quantum sensing. And so what we, what we do is use our proprietary software to extract the real signal out, which is the, the bottom right. If you can do that, you, f you finally have viable quantum sensors that you can put on a rack and, and mount inside a ship. So yeah, I mean, there was a recent uh, announcement um, with, uh, with DARPA um, where we are working on a significant contract to, uh, to construct the next generation of sensors, things that are uh, sensors that are significantly more robust and significantly more sensitive than the, than the current sensors, because current sensors rely on a set of band-aids, you know, gyroscopes stabilized, or, or you know, even the, and, you know, we have seen uh, trials that use booms uh, to, to isolate the sensor from the, from the noise of the, of the airplane, et cetera, but we are doing away with all of that, and, and this is essential innovation that DARPA is, is funding, and thanks to them. And uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, Ironstone Opal is our product, and it's available for pre-sales and integration testing, and uh, please come and talk to us if you're interested. Thank you.